Welcome to another episode of Faith Files. Now, let's join forces with the super duper detective agency and Detective Morales as they investigate questions of absolute biblical proportions. Hey everybody, welcome to Faith Files. Are you guys ready to learn the answer to another big question? I'm gonna be your host, Shelby. Today, we're gonna start off by singing an awesome song called The Detective Shuffle. So why don't you guys get on your feet and get ready to sing. Detectives. Look high, look low. Reach out, don't shout. Look out and find. We search for the clues. God gives us the truth because He loves me, because He loves you. Detectives, tiptoe. Look high. Again, my dear friends, I have a puzzling mystery I need your help with today. I was working on many detective things at my desk and went to get some water. When I came back, I noticed that someone had taken a bite out of my cookie. I need your help gathering clues so I can figure out who the culprit is. One type of clue that helps investigators solve cases is fingerprints. Junior detectives, I need your help. Let's count the fingerprints we find on my desk. Okay, let's see how many fingerprints we can find. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow, good job. That's a lot of fingerprints. Now, let's see if we can figure out how many people have been involved. Do you know how many fingers are on each of our hands? Let's count them. Hold up your right hand. That's this one. Ready to count? One, two, three, four, five. Five fingers, very good. Now let's count the left hand. One, two, three, four, five. Also five fingers. Five and five together equal 10. You have 10 fingers, marvelous. Now, how many fingerprints did we count? 10. <laughs> That's right. That means there must be only one person who came and ate my cookie. <laughs> now I need to discover who the culprit might be. Thank you for your help, junior detectives. I must be on my way. See you next time. Hi, friends. I'm Michaela, and I'm bringing you the memory verse. All right, do you guys remember it? It's Jeremiah 29, 13, and it goes like this. When you look for me with all your heart, you will find me. Great job. All right, let's walk through it nice and slow. Jeremiah 29, 13. When you point out, when you look. For a look, we're going to do a C shape, a circle around the face. When you look for me, and we're pointing up because it's God talking in this verse. 
when you look for me with all. For all, you're gonna use both hands and have one hand go around the other and land on the other hand, just like that. When you look for me with all your heart, and for heart, you're gonna to point to your heart with your middle finger like that. When you look for me with all your heart, you, point out again, will find, and pretend like you're picking something up, like you found it, you will find me. Great job. All right, let's go through that two times through. Jeremiah 29, 13. When you look for me with all your heart, you will find me. Great job. All right, one more time. Jeremiah 29, 13. When you look for me with all your heart, you will find me. Great job, guys. Keep practicing and show your friends. Great job. I love singing, counting, and learning our memory verse, and I hope you guys do too. Now it's time to learn an answer to one of our big questions. Do you guys ever have any questions? Today, Andy and Allie are trying to come up with one of their own, but they might need a little help from Sarah. Let's watch and see what happens. Maybe we could ask, why is the sky blue? No, too easy. Everyone knows the answer to that. They do? Yeah, the sky is blue because the ocean is blue. Mm, then why is the ocean blue? Because the sky is... That doesn't make any sense. Well, we need to come up with a question really soon because here comes Sarah. Hey guys, how are you? Oh, I'm good. good. Sarah, we've been thinking really hard about mm -hmm. what we want to ask today. Yeah, oh. and we haven't come up with a big question yet. Ah, okay. Hmm. Well, how about this? What if I asked you guys a question? Oh, yeah. sure. Okay, let me see if I can think of a good one. Hmm. Oh, I got a really good one. Okay. How can we trust the Bible? That's easy. My parents believe it, and they taught me to believe it, too. That's why I trust it. Okay. And what about you, Andy? Mm, well, when I read or learn about the Bible, it makes me feel good because mm. it's about a God who loves me, and I like that. Oh, that's great, Andy. You know, I love learning about how amazing God's love is, too. But what if somebody who didn't know God or doesn't trust the Bible asked you that question? What evidence would you give for why they could or should trust that what the Bible says is true? Uh, oh, mm. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'd say. Well, this may be the perfect question for Detective Morales and his crack investigative team. Let's go see what they have to say about why we should trust the Bible. Oh, yeah, wow. I'm excited. Super Duper Detective Agency, Pickle speaking, how may I direct your call? Oh, hiya, Sarah. Nice to hear from you, sweetheart. Oh, oh, you do, do ya? Well, sad to say Detective Morales isn't in right now. But I... Pickles! Ah. I'm right here. <laughs> so you are. Sorry, I didn't see you. Sarah, he's here after all. I'll get him for you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. You got another case for us? Mm-hmm. Ah, yes. You want to know why we should be able to trust the Bible? Yes, that is a big question. A big question. Well, don't worry. We'll get right on it. Pickles, let's start a new case file. I think we'll call this one, The Case of the Believable Bible. You got it, DM. <laughs> Records department, Mrs. Barrett speaking. Hi there, Mrs. Barrett. I need some information regarding the Bible, specifically where it came from. Yes, of course. I have that information right here. The Bible consists of two parts, an Old Testament and a New Testament, for a total of 66 books joined together. 
the official list for the books of the New Testament was finalized at the Council of Hippo. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Barrett, you, you lost me on that last part. What do big, water-loving hippos have to do with any of this? Oh, you mistake me, sir. I'm not referring to the animal. Hippo is the name of a city. You see, after Jesus died and was raised again, there were stories and letters told about him and our Christian faith that were always considered to be true. Over time, people wanted to add more writings. So, the council was formed in Hippo to make the final official list for the books of the New Testament that we have today. Are you telling me, Mrs. Barrett, that some group of men just threw this Bible together and they called themselves a funny name? Oh, not at all, sir. Based on historical evidence, the books of the New Testament indicate they were written well within a hundred years of Jesus' death and resurrection. And they were based on eyewitness accounts. Eyewitnesses? Meaning people who were there and saw it? Yes, sir. And they were written during the lives of other eyewitnesses. So if the writers were lying, they wouldn't be able to get away with it. Correct, sir. The books in our New Testament weren't considered scripture when the Council of Hippo said so. They were already considered scripture for centuries, and that's why they were formally included on the official list of the New Testament that we have today. I see. Very good, Mrs. Barrett. Thank you so much for all your help. That's what I'm here for, Detective. Here, Pickles. Can you type up these notes that I took while I was talking with Mrs. Barrett? We're going to need to add them to the case file. Oh, you got it, DM. And uh, let's get Junior Detective in here. We're going to need his help. I've got some work for him. Sure thing. I'll get him. Hey, Junior Detective! Reporting for duty, ma'am. You okay? <sighs> Bet you could use another copy, huh? Oh, you're sweet. But actually, it's Detective Morales who got work for you. Really? Yes. Hello. Yes, sir! Reporting for duty, sir! <laughs> Are you up for another trip to the lab to talk to Dr. Jones, Junior Detective? Yes, sir. Ready, willing, and able, sir! Great. We're going to need to get some information. We need to ask him why we should trust the Bible. I'd like to hear what he has to say on that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. On my way, sir! Uh, investigating something, Dr. Jones? Uh, uh, hello there, uh, d junior detective. Hey. Uh, investigating evidence? Hardly! Simply stepped in a piece of gum, and it smells delicious. Trying to determine the exact flavor so as to acquire it. <laughs> well, here's the deal. We are working on another big case, and I need your help. Oh, of course, junior detective. I'm at your service. Good. So let me ask you the question, and here it is. Are you ready? Why should we trust the Bible? Well, that is a big case indeed. And I've got good news for you. I can help. You see, the Bible was written a very, very long time ago. Mm -hmm. But how can we know that what it says today is the same as what it said back then? I thought I was supposed to ask the questions. Uh, how good are you with history, detective? Excuse me, sir? Um, how do I put this in a way that you can understand it? How can we know for certain that Plato existed? I love Plato. I have a bunch of different colors of Plato at home, and I make these coil baskets to put my Q-tips in. Uh, that's very strange, uh, Junior Detective, and has absolutely nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Oh. It's, it's okay. Uh, Homer! Aristotle. Little Caesars, Julius Caesar. These men all lived a very, very long time ago, and yet they had one simple thing in common. They like to write things down. Historians, people who study the past. Well, they've developed something that they like to call the bibliographical test. This test determines how likely it is to believe that what we have is the same is what the author originally penned. So there's a test that gives us evidence that was what was written a long, long, 
long, long, long, long, long time ago is the same as today? Indeed. Junior detective, write this down. Based on this very test, we can have more confidence in the Bible as a historical document than we can in any other historical document ever written. That's pretty impressive. Including anything Homer, Plato, Little Caesar, or any of those other old guys wrote. So what you're saying is we can trust what our Bible says today is the same it was what was first written a long, 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 long time ago? Quite so. Righto. Cheerio. Mm. And off you go. Ah, uh, there he is now, Pickles. Let's see what evidence we've gathered. I'm back, sir. <sighs> okay. All right, Junior Detective. What can we add to the case file? Well, sir, it would seem that we can trust that the Bible we have today really was what was written shortly after Jesus' death and resurrection. Great work, Junior Detective. And I did find another piece of evidence that I think sums up what we learned from Mrs. Barrett. It was written by a man by the name of Vadi Bakum, and he explains the Bible this way. The Bible is a reliable collection of historical documents written by eyewitnesses during the lifetime of other eyewitnesses. They report supernatural events that took place in the fulfillment of specific prophecies and claim that their writings are divine rather than human in origin. Divine rather than human? That just means that it was made by God and not by humans, right? And we haven't even talked about the prophecies yet. <laughs> another day, Junior Detective, another day. I think we have more than enough evidence to send this off to Sarah. And I would say that the case of the believable Bible has been solved. That's another case closed for the Faith Files. Phew, that was a lot of really good information. So, what do you guys think? I think there are a lot of reasons to trust the Bible besides just believing the same thing as my parents. Yeah, it sure seems so, Allie. Yeah, and now if a friend asks me why they should trust the Bible, I can talk about how it's a historical document that can be trusted more than any other historical document we have. <laughs> and that it's more than just a book that gives me good feelings. That's great, Andy. Sarah, what would you say to someone who asked you why the mm. Bible can be trusted? That's a really good question, Allie. I think I would tell them that the Bible was written based on eyewitness accounts. So people who actually saw Jesus, his miracles, his ministry, his life, death, and resurrection, and that it was written while they were still alive. You said that very well, Sarah. I like that answer a lot. Well, thank you, Allie. I'm happy to help.
read it for words, read it backwards. I for your insights, for your upsides, for your insights. A make you break, make you bold, make you brave. L be love forever, love forever, ever, ever. B read it backwards, read it forwards, read it backwards. I for your insights, for your We learned so much today. So now it's time to play a game. So what I want us to do is we're gonna play a game called true or not true. I'm gonna ask you three different questions and if you think it's true, I want you to take a big step forward, okay? And if you think it's not true, I want you to take a jump back. You got it? Question number one. Today's big question was, why is the sky blue? Do you think that's true or not true? If you think it's true, take a jump forward. And if you think it's not true, take a jump backwards. Did you guys take a jump backwards? Great job! Because today our big question was actually, how do we know we can trust the Bible? Great job! Question number two. The Bible was written by a group of hippos. Do you think that's true or not true? If you think it's true, jump forwards. And if you think that's not true, take a jump backwards. Did you guys jump backwards again? Great job. The Bible wasn't written by a group of hippos, but the list of books in our New Testament was completed by men in the city of Hippo. Great job, you guys. Question number three. Remember, if it's true, jump forward. And if it's not true, jump backwards. An eyewitness is someone who sees something as it happens. What do you think? Did you jump forwards or backwards? If you jumped forwards, that's the correct answer. Today we learned that the books in our New Testament were based on what eyewitnesses said happened. Great job, you guys. That was so much fun playing with you guys. How do we know we can trust the Bible? That's a big question, and today we learned some big answers so that we can tell others why they can trust the Bible too. The Bible really is unlike any other book that was ever written in the history of the whole world. Even though it was written a long, long time ago, we can be sure that what it said when it was first written is what it says today. The books in our New Testament were written based on what people said who saw and heard Jesus, and what they wrote has been used to teach Jesus followers ever since. Let's pray and thank God for the Bible that we have today. Dear God, thank you so much for giving us the Bible so that we can learn about your love and the promises that you have for us. In your name we pray, amen. Well, that's all we have time for today. It was so much fun hanging out with you guys and you guys are becoming awesome junior detectives. I can't wait to see you guys next week. Bye.